Good day, everyone. Or is it already evening, <laughs> afternoon? So um, originally, uh, um, this talk was filed in a, in a hope to get some feedback um, since almost every single downstream and upstream of CentOS actually uses free APA as part of their infrastructure. Um, I asked for feedback before um, the uh, talk, but I got zero. <laughs> so, and then um, in order to get many more uh, interesting talks um, at this event, uh, my slot was cut in half. So this will be an interesting discussion where I probably will be talking and expecting that some people will talk back to me maybe afterwards. And this is actually not unusual because many organizations who use free APA are very shy talking about their business critical infrastructure in public. So <laughs> it's it's pain to not hear your customer in public, but sometimes they do. We, we have horror stories on the free API user mailing list. Please join and enjoy telling your horror story. Um, I'm working at Red Hat for quite a long time now. I think it's a 13 year now that I'm working on free API and all other identity management related uh, projects. And um, well, this talk will be about how you use free APA. From my point of view, discovering this from what I found in pub, from the public information about you people who are so shy that you don't tell about this. <laughs> yeah, so for those who don't know, um, as a reminder, free APA really builds around three pillars. Um, it's identity, authentication, and access management. Even though we call officially the A in IPA as audit, and audit does not exist, we don't cover that, it exists uh, through other means and you're supposed to automate that yourself. And these shows like pillars we built on top. These are mostly open source projects that we contribute to and enhance for years and so on. Um, and if you look at the use of these pillars in um, downstreams and upstreams of CentOS, these are roughly can be split in, in three parts. So IPA is a backend for all of those. Um, for the users, the front facing is usually a user portal. That portal, um, which is a project called Noggin, um, is what um, Fedora developed for itself when Fedora account system was kind of replaced. Um, this front end relies on authentication of users through the um, um, identity provider. An identity provider is a typical thing you do when you log in into web services. So the one that Fedora developed for itself is Ypsilon and it's used for um, quite a lot of uh, systems, but unfortunately it's under stalled development, I would say. Um, that would probably be a, a fair description, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a stalled development. Um, so Noggin talks to free IPA but uses uh, Ypsilon, which also talks to free APA in different ways. And um, Alma Linux uses, instead of Ypsilon, it uses other open source project, Keyclock. Keyclock also talks to different parts of IPA to get this information to Keyclock. And Noggin uses um, OAuth, uh, basically, to extract uh, access um, rights to, to talk to other parts of the system. Um, when, when I was making this presentation, I, I kind of omitted the, um, the biggest elephant in this, uh, like the downstream of CentOS stream that 
wasn't covered by this. But I, then I remembered that actually Dustin Minich from Red Hat IT did a wonderful talk um, when, when that was six years ago at Fosdem here when he was describing how Red Hat migrates to uh, Red Hat Identity Management, which is uh, part of IPA that's part of RHEL. And that is his talk. So if you want to know how Red Hat uh, makes all Red Hatters to use IPA for, for this, not just the people who contribute to uh, CentOS, he is telling about that story. Um, but I will focus on the uh, upper part. So <clears throat> if we look at the um, set of features that um, all of these uh, projects are using, it's fairly uh, comprehensive. Um, but it's different, and different across all of those. So I don't know how Alma Linux specifically configured their IP environment because it's not public. <laughs> but what I can get by creating an account uh, in Alma Linux project, which is great, I can create it. Um, it uses almost the same features that the rest of them is using because it's using the same infrastructure that Noggin requires. But how they use these features after you created an account is shrouded in shadow. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to know, really, please tell. This is not bashing, it's, it's just whatever we have, there's maybe less transparency that is needed, maybe more transparency uh, is not needed here. I don't know, this is like, if you run critical infrastructure environment, you have your own. Um, yeah. The, uh, <laughs> I'll talk to you afterwards. Um, there, there, there is an Ansible playbook that, that does all this for us that we wrote, um, and I have not done git push yet. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the good thing. So there is another Ansible play, playbook. We have now four Ansible uh, playbooks, five. Yeah, and they different ones um, to cover all these things. Um, this says a lot, and I will come to this, uh, about the automation of all of this access. The uh, interesting parts that I would like to highlight here is that um, Noggin requires use of the uh, constraint delegation on the Kerberos level. That's a very good security-wise feature, and uh, many of the um, people who use free IP for a long time now suffer because we uh, tighten up a lot of uh, these things to fix security problems. Um, uh, Fedora uses Kerberos authentication to access Fedora services by Fedora maintainers. CentOS uses certificate-based TLS authentication, so you get, as a user, a certificate and you authenticate to your services with that client certificate. Um, Rocky uses integrated DNS uh, management, so the DNS server that IPA provides, and it uses Ansible free IPA, while Fedora and CentOS, they use Ansible, but they call out command line utilities. Uh, their environment predates um, Ansible free IPA project, but it's nice to see how all of this goes. And now that Jonathan say that the Alma uh, does Ansible, I don't know what they're using. Probably Ansible free IP. Cool, that's that's great. Um, on the other side, um, this is like the internal thing. Um, the um, user authentication to identity providers is what users see. So in Fedora, you can use Kerberos to authenticate. Uh, you get Kerberos ticket on your machine and then you can use it to authenticate to all the other web and whatever services that Fedora runs. And that uh, can be done with either password or password and one time uh, code that is uh, based on a certain token or whatever you have on your phone somewhere. 
same works for Rocky Linux because that's the feature exposed by Noggin and it's not disabled in their Noggin deployment. Therefore, I'm, I get, gather that they have this. But um, the interesting part is that their Epsilon implementation exposes Kerberos authentication, but it's not configured. So publicly, you cannot get Kerberos ticket in the Rocky Linux infrastructure, even though they fully support it in, in Free API because you cannot disable it. Um, on the Alma side, you can use password and password and token uh, for the authentication, but their key clock um, identity provider is not configured to use Kerberos at all, so you cannot use Kerberos. Whatever they are doing internally, they are not. The, um, um, my understanding is that the build system, Peridot, is not even connected to this system. It's using actually uh, Google authentication. That's them. Oh, that's them, right. The, yeah, that's another kind of split. The, the uh, Peridot system is not connected to the uh, IPA environment. Yeah, so uh, you can see that uh, there is a space for different environments and maybe gradually this goes in. We see this with a lot of Red Hat uh, customers as well. They are growing eventually, uh, enabling uh, different environments to interoperate. And a key point here, of course, is OAuth identity providers. They really allow to get things connected a lot. And then um, user, when it gets the res uh, this ticket or gets the um, access token, it can connect to actual services. So again, in, in Fedora, you can use Kerberos to directly talk to the services, um, or you can use this OAuth token. In other environments, um, you get certificates on the um, CentOS side, you get OAuth tokens because you, you use the same services or similar services. And uh, on CentOS stream, which has a bit weird separate infrastructure uh, for different reasons, um, it also uses Kerberos, but that Kerberos is not the Kerberos used by the Fedora and CentOS joint infrastructure. Um, it's the Kerberos used by Red Hat's internal infrastructure, which in turn, like Dustin Minich told us six years ago, is IPA. Um, on the uh, Rocky side, as I say, the build system is using OAuth tokens. It's not using Kerberos at all. And I gather that on Alma side, it's also OAuth tokens instead of anything uh, from the actual infrastructure. Yeah, for now. I'd, I would love to hear about plans and how we can help enable more stuff for you. Uh, in uh, IPA, uh, but I don't see these plans. And that's good. So, <laughs> yeah, I said something that, <laughs> that's good that we can talk now. <laughs> um, and here I come to the other part of it. So while I was uh, proposing this presentation and working on getting some feedback that I didn't get. Um, Fedora infrastructure team um, shut themselves in, into a fit uh, by doing the upgrade of, of the environment because um, Red Hat has released a security update. So we did a security update in the beginning of Oct um, January uh, fixing two problems that we have found uh, last autumn. And um, one of these problems um, sort of uh, highlighted uh, that, that the um, people, when they deploy something, they typically don't want to touch what works, right? If it works, don't touch, don't modify, don't read release notes that ask you for upgrading certain things, um, continue working with that. But then security updates comes in and all your technical debt starts pushing you to overtime and uh, stress and, and so on. So Fedora tried to get the um, 
upgrade to RHEL 9 to get certain things. Then we release this security update and security update forces them to do uh, certain upgrades on the database level and that causes certain other problems. And um, yeah, it started actually not last two weeks, but much earlier, I think, in when it was in the beginning of the previous year when they started migrating from RHEL 7. And that migration from RHEL 7 was coincided with the internal Red Hat data center migration. So they got some of the servers uh, stood up in a different data center but didn't follow documentation for removing existing servers. They were linking um, kind of records about those servers that don't exist anymore. And then they started to migrate this environment to RHEL 8. Uh, it took several months to plan and execute this migration. They cannot migrate to RHEL 9 directly because of the uh, too tight security uh, uh, defaults in RHEL 9, which basically make RHEL 7 and RHEL 9 incompatible on TLS protocols levels for various reasons. So you have to do this like jumping in steps. And um, that led to uh, them actually asking us, um, the IPA team, to help with all the stuff. We were helping around certain things. And then um, security update in January happened. And the technical debt started to uh, bite back. So one thing that was really big technical depth is that IPA is uh, very serious about um, handling how POSIX IDs for the users are allocated. We maintain I, so what called ID ranges, the spaces from which we do this allocation. And if you have uh, legacy environments like from all the times, you have users allocated everywhere or outside these environments. So that's okay. If you create a new range that covers these users, you can do that. But typically, people don't create these ranges because everything works. It works for, for the users. It does work for certain applications and so on. But for us, this is um, kind of not just the ranges that we maintain because we allocate from them. We use information from these ranges to also protect the um, applications running on the systems. We uh, use this to um, correspond to certain requirements in Kerberos protocol extensions. Uh, some not following that basically killed um, Microsoft Active Directory environments in 2021 this so-called um, dollar, uh, dollar attack. Um, I, I will give a link if you want uh, to, to get this, but basically if you had cross environments, um, Active Directory and Linux environments, it was possible to become root on the Linux environment by defining objects in Active Directory. You create a machine called root and it has a dollar on the end because that's how machines defined in Active Directory. And then you can try to log in as root machine with the machine account permissions on Linux side and it drops dollar and you get root, yeah. So we fixed this problem in MIT Kerberos and Samba Active Directory in FreeAPA it was much e easier on free APA because we already had this problem anticipated like in 2015 uh, and did some fixes on SSSD side and so on. But it's still a, a big problem that some of the researchers look at into in the Kerberos and they tried and they found um, a problem with the um, services for users um, extension that is extensively used not in Microsoft environment but also outside it in free API. Um, they, they found a way to kind of break through there and in 
2022, 2023, there were problems that were fixed. So we started to tighten things using the um, more and more features that together with Microsoft were developed. So these are not Microsoft features. These are features that Kerberos community around interoperability between AD and uh, Linux developed together. So we extended protocol together with them, agreed on the format, agreed on all of these things, but we needed to implement this. So this is implemented in Samba, this is implemented in Free APA, and enforce it in MIT Kerberos that we use. Also in Heimdall Kerberos, but we focus on MIT um, implementation here. So this is now deployed uh, everywhere. RHEL 9 got this like from the beginning of RHEL 9. And uh, starting with January 10th, uh, we backported some of this work to RHEL 8. We couldn't do much there because um, there are certain requirements on the uh, um, ABI stability promises that we cannot break through. And uh, these forced us to kind of find a different way how to do this. Um, anyway, this is what they were upgrading into because they were still doing the RHEL 8 machines uh, and um, not RHEL 9. Um, they had users that were already present there. I mean, in, in Fedora case, it's several uh, uh, tens, thousands of users that don't have these special properties that we expect to be there. So some time was spent in, in last couple of weeks fixing this and um, we got it working except that Noggin uses the concept of staged users the users that are not users until they prove that they users, like they have email and that email belongs to them, then Noggin moves them from staged area to production users. Like they become real POSIX users and they can log in into machines and so on. Um, <clears throat> and apparently one of the um, internal plugins in IPA that was setting out these additional IDs it didn't like staged users because these staged users internally have uh, POSIX UID as minus one and GID as minus one because, well, these are kind of reserved values. When you move staged user into normal one, it gets this minus one transformed into allocated POSIX ID, the, the one that will be a real one. And the tool didn't like it because we need, didn't test this. Nice, yeah, that happens. So this is fixed now, and on its way to, um, to be in um, next rail releases. Uh, so it's not yet in stream, it's in the uh, uh, process of being pushed to stream, um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. And then, um, and then we found out that, well, uh, there are more things missing. Uh, this is also fixed now. <laughs> so Fedora outage lasted like a week, mostly because we, we had all volunteers working uh, across a globe all the time uh, and uh, reinstalling servers several times a week. Uh, to get this whole things uh, fixed. Now, um, I had like two minutes uh, left, I think that was said. Um, this is a, a list of uh, interesting features that probably less known to, to most of the organizations and hints to where we are uh, going and, and extending the functionality. So since um, rel, um, Eight, what is eight seven? Um, so November um, 2022, uh, IPA supports login against identity provider. So you can use OAuth identity provider like GitHub or Google or so to log in into your Linux environment, get Kerberos ticket, and use that Kerberos ticket as if you logged in with your password or something. 
and no password is needed in IPA. I don't think any, any of the um, um, centers uh, downstream or upstream is using that yet. Um, in Fedora already, in CentOS stream already support for FIDO2 tokens. I actually use this uh, physical token to log in into my Fedora machine here. Um, this something that we were uh, showing on FOSDEM um, last year as a kind of beginning. Now we are, will be showing some more progress on Sunday. <coughs> Um, as well as the progress with um, replacing old um, um, LDAP-based provider in Keycloak with a uh, scheme V2 breach to IPE, more modern, more kind of nice thing. There will be also FOSDEM talk on Sunday. Uh, we are working on making sure that you can use of defined POSIX IDs of existing or of identity providers without kind of enrolling into IPA directly or Active Directory. But if you have them enrolled, you can also have this kind of integrated. Um, the thing that is not a thing yet is the multi-domain management. Um, so trust between multiple IPA environments. It's coming. I have it working on the Kerberos level, just cannot resolve users yet but uh, we, will, we will be getting there. The um, less known features for the certificate management, so you can have your own Let's Encrypt uh, server um, out of the box. And soon you will have um, hardware uh, storage for the uh, certificates integration. It's already merged in IPA upstream. Uh, we didn't do release yet. Um, we have um, guys doing the um, um, Podmon and um, OpenShift. We work it on making the um, <coughs> so by the uh, management centralize it so that if you have IPA and you have all the um, let's say Podmon machines uh, enrolled in IPA, they all can have the same view on how uh, subordinate IDs for users allocated so that they can log into any of those machines and still have the same mapping for their um, images and their containers that they run there. And finally, uh, we, we do support some fancy uh, authentication indicators in Kerberos that can tell you, okay, I used physical device to authenticate and I get the indicator that says about this and then services can limit access to them based on whether I used password or I used the uh, pass key or I used smart card or I used uh, OAuth uh, identity provider and so on. So this is already uh, kind of um, in RHEL and CentOS stream um, and in Fedora obviously. And there's a tutorial that you can use to, to do that stuff. I haven't seen any of this yet used by publicly known infrastructure, but I'm keen to help if you would like to improve security of your environments. And now, um, I don't think we have time for feedback, <laughs> but I'm here until the end of uh, Sunday, so if you're at FOSDEM or in the evening here, um, we, we can talk. We should talk, and please join free API users mailing list and continue asking. Thank you.